it's an absolutely miserable day here in Dublin, and it's going to be a miserable day for the banks. By the end of the banks, uh, end of the day, I should say, some of them might be hurtling towards some sort of quasi-nationalisation. Let me just explain. About two years, the Irish banking system started to unravel when the property market crashed by half and the country was plunged into recession. That left the banks with billions of dollars, billions of euros, I should say, of bad loans. The government then arranged to buy from the banks these loans, which have got a book value of something like 80 billion euros. That's about half of Ireland's economy. To buy them, the government set up an institution, a sort of a bad bank, known as the National Asset Management Agency, or NAMA. And today, Finance Minister Brian Lenehan, he's going to tell the banks at what discount NAMA will buy their bad loans. That means the, the capital of the banks is going to take a big hit. But there's more to it. The government's also expected to announce the new levels of capital that the banks must hold to be considered prudent. Good body stockbrokers, they estimate the ratios could rise to 7% of capital by the end of the year, increasing to 9% by 2014. Right now, Allied Irish Bank's got about 5%, and the Bank of Ireland has got 6.6%. So it means on one hand, the, 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 the NAMA discount is going to eat into the capital of the banks, and on the other hand, the government is going to ask them to hold more capital in their reserves. Now, I have Ray Kinsella. He's a former economist at the Central Bank here in Ireland. He's also a professor of banking. He's written a book on the ethics of banking, which came out last year. Professor Kinsella, how are the banks going to pay for this increase in capital? It's going, it's going to be extremely difficult because the normal options of going to the market or making a rights issue are pretty well cut off. There's no appetite there at the moment. Um, probably uh, they will continue to cut costs, which has started already. So there will be ferocious cost cutting and uh, rationalisation. But at the end of the day, it's going to be the government that will be the provider of capital. So at the end of the day, you mentioned nationalisation. What is the effect of having a, 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 an economy where the banking system is effectively nationalised? Is that going to be a good thing or a bad thing in the long run? Well, it was an inevitable thing, really. Um, the, the plunge of the Irish banks was related to um, an overexposure to a toxic property market that has just collapsed. Um, so the degree of intervention in the banks is going to be very considerable. The decision-making capability of bank management will be emasculated, and intervention both from the government and also from the European Commission will really be very, very intrusive. What about the European Union's role? They have a role in actually looking at the business plans both at the Bank of Ireland and allied Irish banks. What's, what's, uh, how does that role affect the, 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 the end game too? Well, the European Commission really has a very significant role here, not only in approving the business plans of the banks and how they're likely to respond, also the kind of disposals they may have to make in order to augment capital. Um, but also the European Commission calls the shots on the NAMA business plan. So in terms of shareholders, it's a pretty grim outlook in terms of the banks as individual businesses. But let's just have a look at Ireland in terms of uh, Ireland's budget deficit and its plans to cut that bu budget deficit. The bond market, pretty good performance over the last quarter or so. What's your expectation going forward for the bond market and the cost of funding here? Well, the markets reacted very well to the government's um uh, plan, the government's projections for cutting the fiscal deficit. The amount wasn't huge, it was uh, 4 billion. Now, what that did was to cut very deeply into domestic demand. The markets res res did respond very positively, but going forward, the government has a borrowing requirement of about 25 billion, and it is escalating, and it's escalating against the backdrop of, a, of an economy that needs structural transformation and is very short on domestic demand. So it's a difficult scenario. Professor Kinsella, thanks very much for braving the weather here.